Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, in the sports section. The site is Dwyer Boxing and Sports News, the channel rather. The vanity code to add it to your Roku system, and it's free, is Dwyer Boxing News, one word. On iTunes, Dwyer Boxing News, one word. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, you know, in trying to beat the casino, and it's an ongoing tough battle, right? There's feasts and there's famine. Sometimes you have to look under a lot of old rocks, right? Sometimes you have to get off road and look at, you know, old films or old results going back five years, ten years, etc. Sometimes you have to really venture off the beaten path. Let's do that in this video. There's a middleweight title fight taking place. It's between Matt Karaboff, and understand he was a decorated amateur, right, and Andy Lee. Understand Andy Lee had his moments both as an amateur and as a professional, right? You know, if you look under the hood, if you dig under some old rocks, you're going to find out that, believe it or not, Janady Golovkin and the amateurs fought Matt Karabov. Janady Golovkin in the amateurs fought Andy Lee. And he beat both of them. Right? So, if there's a fight that happens between the winner of this fight and Janady Golovkin, just understand there's going to be more familiarity than I believe the casual sports fan would imagine. Right? Also understand, too, that there's been talk of Saul Alvarez. If his fight with Miguel Cotto doesn't get finalized and doesn't go through, there's talk of him possibly challenging Janady Golovkin. Right? Well, if you dig around here online, you're going to find out that Saul Alvarez has already sparred with Janady Golovkin in Big Bear, California. There are reports of the sparring session. Just understand that according to the reports, Golovkin had the upper hand. Golovkin was able to back up Canelo. Golovkin was the bigger man. Understand there's a height dynamic there, right? Canelo's about 5'7 and a half-ish. Golovkin's 5'10 and a half. Right? Golovkin's the bigger man, even though Canelo gains a lot of weight between fights. Right? And apparently Golovkin wasn't that phased, at least according to reports here online, by Canelo's power. Right? And Golovkin, according to reports, uh, by the end of that sparring session, had the upper hand and was backing up Saul Alvarez, right? If that Golovkin-Canelo fight takes place, I'll be going with Golovkin in that one. Let me point out, too, Canelo's in a unique position because Canelo, in my opinion, can't make 154 comfortably anymore. And he's a little bit undersized for 160. Right? I know. <laughs> How do you put it? I can just imagine the comments I'm going to get to this video. But you need to ask yourself, if you're a shorter man, and if you don't have great foot speed, if your foot speed is, let's say, average, right, and you're shorter, and you're fighting taller men, look at the heights on people like Peter Quillen, Andy Lee, right? Taller men who can stay outside with the jab and who have power, right? Understand, you know, Peter Quillen is a big hitter, right? Drop Winky Wright in a fight, and Winky Wright's hard to drop, right? Then you wonder, how would Canelo be successful long-term at 160 pounds? In other words, if he's getting hit with a jab from the outside and guys are moving on the outside and guys can hit him with big shots, won't he find himself in against the equivalent of, from his perspective, Thomas Hearns? 
right? A guy who's bigger with longer reach, won't Canelo's fights end up looking like Hearns' fight looked against Roberto Duran, right? A great boxer who couldn't get close enough to Thomas Hearns and who ended up getting blown out, right? Well, the point I'm making here is simply that Golovkin has been in the ring already with Canelo. If Canelo fights Cotto and gets by Cotto, I think Canelo, if he were to ever fight Gennady Golovkin, would likely come up short, right? Again, because, quite frankly, he lacks experience at 160, and Golovkin's already been in the ring with him, there wouldn't be the element of surprise, right? And Golovkin would be able to stay away from him, then come in with bombs, right? Understand, too, that Golovkin has also sparred with light heavyweight champion Sergei Kovalev, right? This talk about Golovkin possibly fighting Kovalev needs to be taken seriously because there's a video here online. Again, we're looking under rocks. It's Abe Sanchez, Golovkin's current trainer who used to work with Kovalev. And he basically claims that the men were in the ring together and believe it or not the light heavyweight champion Kovalev, the bigger man, was deferential. Too deferential. Sanchez thought Golovkin wasn't getting the work that he needed to get because Kovalev wouldn't step on the gas. I would encourage everyone to look at that YouTube video. Just Google it. Abe Sanchez, Kovalev, Golovkin. It should pop up. Right? The point is, these two guys know each other. They know what to expect in the ring. Now, it might just be a style thing because Kovalev works best from mid-range. Right? You know what I like to say. He's a mid-range hooker with a jab. Right? Kovalev's not the kind of guy, even against a smaller opponent, who's going to take that extra step and try to smother them. Right? So Kovalev, and keep in mind, people need to be aware of this, Kovalev has a very long reach for a guy his size. Kovalev might be trying to leverage his reach. Right? I believe if he were to fight Golovkin, a lot of his attack would be jabs, right? So Kovalev might not want to give away reach by jumping on Golovkin. The point, though, is that Golovkin has been in the ring with Kovalev and has held his own. Now, there are further stories here online of the fact that Golovkin has had some sparring partners who used to be heavyweights. I'm not kidding. He spars with cruiserweights because apparently Sanchez has a hard time convincing middleweights to get in the ring to spar with him. Now some of his sparring partners apparently have been in the ring with Alexander Povetkin and Marius Wach, heavyweights. And if these guys are to be believed, Golovkin hits on par with those heavyweights. Let's talk about another guy, Arthur Beterbiev, right? He's new on the scene, but again, understand, he's been fighting as an amateur for years, right? For years. Well, his people, of course, are saying, hey, he's ready to fight Kovalev right now. They're calling out Kovalev through the press. Of course they are. Why? Because when Baturbiov was an amateur, he beat Kovalev in the amateurs by decision. By decision. Right? But just understand he beat Kovalev in the amateurs. Also understand, too, that Baturbiov is on the clock. According to rumors, he's having a very hard time. Very hard. Making weight at 175 pounds. He's bigger than that when he's not in the ring. 
So now is his time, even though he doesn't have that many professional fights, to fight the big names at light heavyweight. Right now's the time. And so, of course, he's trying to call out Kovalev. Just to understand that Paterbiyev, as an amateur, KO'd Ishmael Shalak. We're talking about a huge puncher with some familiarity to Kovalev. If I'm Kovalev, I don't fight him right now because the risk-reward is not there. The boxing hardcore knows who Arthur Paterbiyev is. Right? I don't believe the casual fan does. Right? I think the casual fan just knows that he beat up on Tavares Cloud, who was viewed as a faded fighter going into that fight. Right? And so, if I were Kovalev, I would just pick on a bigger name. Right? Kovalev famously beat up and took the title from Nathan Cleverly. Cleverly is fighting Tony Bellew in a fight that is going to be a barn burner, folks. That You need to uh, mark that fight on your calendar. Now, my point to you is simply this. If I'm Kovalev, I would show up and I'd be ringside. Let's, let's be old school about this, right? Just show up, be ringside. Trust me, the reporters will find you, right? If Tony Bellew wins that fight, Right? If I'm Kovalev, I'd say, hey, Tony, I'm right here. You know, are you just fighting or are you fighting for titles? You know, if Cleverly wins that fight, if I'm Kovalev, I'd say, hey, Nathan, let's do this again. Right? You know, both Bellew and Cleverly, in my opinion, would deliver bigger crowds than Arthur Paterbiyev. Let me go one step further. Right? Paterbiyev these days fights out of Canada. Well, there's a Canadian light heavyweight with a much bigger name and a much bigger fan base in Canada who has a belt around his waist, Adonis Stevenson. And I believe that, you know, Kovalev can say, look, I want to unify titles. I'm a champion. What else do you want me to do? Right? Keep in mind, there's a history between the two guys because, right, the Kovalev people believe they had a deal to fight Adonis Stevenson. And then, of course, Stevenson changed management groups and said, hey, you don't have anything in writing from me. Right? I believe Stevenson these days is with Al Heyman. By the way, the world's not as big as you think it is. Understand, Stevenson's former management group, I believe, is now with Arthur Paterbiyev. But that's another story. Well, let me just say this. You know, if I'm Kovalev at this point, since my name has never been as bright as it is now that I've beaten Bernard Hopkins, I would call out Adonis Stevenson. I'd say, hey, Adonis, let's do this. You know, I thought we had a deal before. I'm still here. You know what? Now I have even more belts. I have the belt I had before. Now I have Bernard Hopkins' belts. You know, are you here afraid to fight me because you tasted your own mortality in the later rounds against Andres Fonfara. By the way, he's another name that should be somewhere in this mix, right? Bernard Hopkins is a little bit hesitant to say, hey, I'm retired, even at 49, even after really the worst round of his life, round 12, against Kovalev, right? Why is he hesitant to retire? Because he's looking at the film of the later rounds of that Fonfara Donna Stevenson fight and he's thinking look as long as a guy like that has a belt around his waist I know I'm championship level maybe not maybe not able to beat Kovalev right but I'm sure in Hopkins's mind Kovalev had some inside information since Kovalev was training with John David Jackson who used to be part of Hopkins' corner, right? I'm sure Hopkins views Stevenson as a one-handed fighter, right? It's a great left hand, but it's one hand, right? And I'm sure he also views Stevenson as a guy who can get tired in the later rounds because he did against Funfara, right? Just like I'm sure Funfara is kicking himself in the head thinking, man, why, 
Why did I figure out that Stevenson, who is in his mid-30s, right? Keep in mind, we talk about Hopkins as the old man of boxing. Has anyone else noticed the age in that division, light heavy, right? Because Kovalev's in his 30s, Stevenson's in his 30s, right? Isn't Boutte in his 30s? You know, what happened to the new generation at 175 pounds? All of these guys are older than you think. There isn't that 24-year-old who's like, hey, hey, over here, it's my time. Right? So, I believe there's a race going on right now to try to convince Adonis Stevenson to fight. Right? I believe that race includes Jean Pascal. Right? Think about it. Two big time Canadian light heavyweights and they haven't been in the ring professionally? How's that possible? To the Canadian boxing press, you guys have got to call out the fighters. Come on, that fight should have happened years ago. Right? Huh. I mean, aren't both of those guys in their 30s or late 20s in Pascal's case, whatever it is? You got to be kidding me. I believe Pascal wants Stevenson in the ring. I know Kovalev wants Stevenson in the ring. He signed to fight Stevenson. Then that deal fell apart. I'm guessing Bernard Hopkins fights in his 50s if he's given the shot against Adonis Stevenson. Right? And of course you have the Arthur Perturbia factor, but here's what I think is going to happen with him. He's having a problem making 175. I believe guys are going to quietly dodge him by not signing to fight him in the next six months because then he's going to have to venture up to cruiserweight. Right? Sometimes the weight takes care of the problem. Right? The other guy can no longer make weight. You know, you can wait a year, then say, hey, you know, I'm willing to fight him at 175, and you know one of two things is going to happen. The other side's going to have to balk because they can't make weight, or the other side is going to show up looking malnourished, looking drained. Right? And you can literally prepare for that by training hard and being ready to take the fight into the later rounds. So pay close attention to all that's happening, right? From the weight classes that Golovkin has said he's willing to fight in, right? 154 to 175, right? A lot's happening at 175 too much. For Bernard Hopkins, who's financially well off, he doesn't need the money. Folks, he's in the Hall of Fame two times over, right? As a middleweight and as a light heavyweight, right? Too much is happening for Bernard to say, hey, I'm retired, right? And just to understand, there are guys who face Kovalev as an amateur, Arthur Peturbiov, who want a piece. Right? Kovalev, of course, is believing that he has added to his game. Right? I'm telling you, his jab was beautiful against Hopkins when he threw it. Right? I'm telling you, it was beautiful. So, a lot's happening in boxing. Uh, just understand that we're about to get some great fights. Just understand, too, that I'm not buying the hype that there aren't quality fighters in their 20s, right, at middleweight or at light heavyweight. I'm guessing the 20-somethings are out there. They're just not getting televised. They're just not getting noticed. There are going to be some new names that emerge on the world stage that dazzle us all. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.